Let's start to rework this Angular app so that we can get routing. And our goal is going to be to be able to build URLs to uh, let us index into the bridge data. So right now, just to show you where we're at, when you, if we were to look at our sources, if we were to look at the, um, well, I'll show you bridges.ts. Our, our situation, our problem that we're trying to avoid is our current bundle is huge. Like, look at all this data that I'm pulling in. Thousands and thousands of lines of um, bridge data that's just, it's being bundled into our main module. So if we, if we look at the main bundle, I mean, inside this main bundle, somewhere in here, all that data has to be there. Um, I don't know where it is in here, but somewhere in here, here it is right here. Here's the beginning of it. So you can think like this is not an efficient way to do this. We're we're creating JavaScript that we send down to the browser. Browser needs to render this. Well, it has to parse all, it has to download and parse this and execute it. And here's this massive piece of um, data that's you know inserted into the middle of it. So let's rip that out. We we, we definitely don't want to do that. So what we want to do is we want to make it so that we can start putting that information in the URL and then we can start building data services to, to work on that. So our first step is we got to get we got to get routing working in this app. So when we initially built this app, what we did was we asked, uh, we said ng new and we said dash dash routing so that it would so that Angular, the workspace would get generated with routing turned on. So what, what does that mean? What happened? Well, you can see in the app module here that the app routing module got included and um, imported for us. So, you know, it means that we have routing, we have the skeletal structure of routing built into our component, and we can start to, we can start to work on um, building it out for our own purposes. So what we need to do, step one is we need to go to our app routing module and we need to put in some routes. So you can see that things have been wired up here nicely. So we have a list of routes, which is currently empty. And if we fill this out, uh, routing will, will work. So what's nice about Angular is that the machinery is in place. We just have to take advantage of it. OK, so what is a route? A route in Angular is an object that takes a path. So a path, think about um, something that we want to stick onto um, here onto our URL, whatever that's going to look like. And the path is going to be connected in the route to a component. So we're going to say, when this route is requested, I want to render this particular component. OK, so in our case, what we'd like to do is we'd like to make this right-hand component here, which is our bridge info component. We'd like to make it something that gets rendered based on what whatever's happening with the routing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by importing the bridge info component from our bridge info bridge info component TypeScript module. OK, so once that's been done, what I can do is I can start filling out routes here. So remember, a route is a path, which is a string, and then a component, which is some component, and then any other data that we want to put on the, on the route, depending on how you're using it. And what we want to do here is we want to go more specific to least specific. So when the router is interrogating this list of routes, it's going to go and look for things that match. And so we want to be more specific down to less specific. So in our case, what we really want to do, you'll recall that in our web API, we have a route for getting all of the bridges. And we have a route for getting bridges based on a particular ID. So let's, let's start by doing the ID because it's the most specific thing we could do. So we have a path for a route and our route will be bridges 
slash, and I'm gonna, similar to express, I'm gonna include a, a parameter, an ID parameter in this route. The component that I want to render is my bridge info component. The next most specific route that I have in this app is for the bridges, all of the bridges. And also I want to render the bridge info component. So in other words, like right now you can see there's nothing being rendered. So whether you pass me an ID or you don't pass me an ID, in both cases, I want to render this component. It's just that if, if one of these was selected, I want it to change to that particular one, but I want that data to be in the URL. Last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put in a the empty path. So if you give me, if you go to this URL and you don't give me bridges or a bridge ID, I want to not render a component, but I want to redirect you to a particular route. So I'll redirect you to the bridges route. And I'm gonna ask that the that when investigating this path, it has to exactly match this. So I'm gonna say that the path match needs to be full like so. So now I've got three routes that are gonna work with this bridge info component. So I, I save that and I don't know if you'll notice this right away, what's happening is the URL has changed and so now I have bridges coming up in the URL because if I go to if I go to the base URL, it, it's going to redirect me to bridges so that it automatically goes to this top level one here. If we wanted to, we could consolidate these two. Like if you don't do anything, then maybe I um, I only render the, the full map of Ontario in order to make this work. Okay, so step one accomplished. Now, the next thing that we have to do is we have to tell Angular where to put our component that we want to render. So right now, our app, the way that it currently works, if you look at our app component.html, no matter what we do, it always renders this app bridge info component, you know, so it's, it's always there. And what we'd like to do is we'd like to change that because I, I don't necessarily, I, I want the router to take care of doing this for me. So what I'm going to do is I'm let's let's just comment this out for a second. So that's what we did have. So what we're going to do now is we're going to say um, to Angular, this right here is where I want you to put the component that the router is going to render. And this is a placeholder. And what's gonna happen is Angular will put it, whatever your component is that you're gonna get in the DOM as a result of the routing, it's essentially gonna hang it off of the bottom of this element. So it's gonna go after this element, okay? Now, because of the way our CSS works, we need to, we need, we need to tell um, the CSS about this region here, this element, so that we can uh, provide styling on it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wrap my, I'm gonna wrap this in a div. Like so. And then what I can do is I can say ID equals bridge info like that. So if I, save this, this may not compile, let's see, because I've broken a bunch of stuff. No, it's happy. So if I take a look at the, at the DOM, um, you'll see right here, okay, here's what we have. So I have a menu and then to the right, we have this div that you're seeing right here, the bridge info div. 
And inside the bridge info div, we have a router outlet, which is this. And then you can see that the, the app bridge info component has been injected here, right? It's been injected here. I'll just minimize it so you can see below where my comment is that you're seeing in the code there. Okay, that's good. So there's a few things we could clean up here. So if we look, um, I guess probably the best place to begin is to work on our menu and get our, or maybe I'll, maybe I'll, well, let me think for a second. What's the best? Um, Let's, let's let's do a little bit of work on the menu. Okay, so the way that the menu works right now, we've got all of these elements being built and they are um, pulling their data from bridges, the bridges array, which is being passed in like so. So what we should be able to do here is, uh, essentially what I wanna do is I wanna, I don't, I don't want to build my UI exactly the same way because currently what I'm doing is I'm putting text inside of a um, LI component and we've, we've essentially created our own link by putting a click handler on here and allowing this to work so that the parent can over here in our, um, let's take a look at it. If we go back to our main app component, here, we are handling the bridge change event that's coming in from the bridge selected, right? The event emitter that we have on our menu component. So our menu component here has a bridge selected event emitter. So a lot of this code can go away because we're gonna be doing it differently. So let's, let's start, um, Let's just start cleaning this up, which is gonna break things, but that's okay. So we're not gonna need an output or an event emitter anymore. So I'm gonna get rid of those. We aren't gonna need this anymore. We're not gonna need this uh, click event handler because we're gonna do it through routing. And eventually we're not gonna need this, but for now I'm gonna leave it in because I don't wanna break everything. So I'm gonna save this and let's rework the HTML for our menu component. Okay, so I don't need to put um, a click handler on here and I'm not gonna need a title anymore, but what I am gonna need is I'm gonna need a, a better element in here. I'm gonna need to put in an anchor element. So I want essentially what I want is an anchor element and the anchor element is going to have this text like so. But I can't do this href equals whatever because I need to use the routing facility that's available to me through uh, Angular, as opposed to hard coding in some kind of a URL that's going to work. So my goal would be, if you click on one of these, I want the ID of the bridge that you just chose to get placed into the URL. That's our goal. So in order to achieve that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to change href. Instead of that, I'm going to I'm going to bind to the router link. So I'm going to pass down instead of href, we're going to do router link. And inside here, I'm going to I'm going to pass in an array and I'm going to break up different components of my route path. So my route path is going to look like the following. It's going to be bridges and then after bridges is going to come 
the ID of the bridge. And let's just make this a little more readable. So we have a link. Every one of these things is going to be a link. It's going to link into the routing system of Angular. And the link that it's going to get is going to be slash bridges slash and then whatever the ID is. So you can see that this is a string. And this is not a string literal, but it's a string in the sense that it's going to pull the ID off of the bridge object as it creates this menu. OK, so if I save this, OK, that worked, but it looks terrible. It looks terrible because what I now have is I have a whole bunch of um, I have a whole bunch of links. So let's make let's make some adjustments to the CSS for this. So what I have right now is I've introduced um, anchor links and I might as well do all the pseudo selectors too. So if it's, I want them all to look the same. If it's, um, if you hover over it, if you, um, if it's been visited, if it's active, all of these, I want to style them so that they have text decoration none. So I want to drop the underline. And I want the color to be inherited from its parent. So I want it to inherit the color from the link element up here. We're setting the color. So whatever that is, I want it to be uh, set like so. So I'm going to save that. That looks better. So now if we inspect this here, what do we have? Whoops. So say here. So I have a list item. Inside the list item, I have an anchor. The anchor is set up so that the router link is equal to bridges, comma, bridges, and then the ID. And you can see that the href is this is being done by Angular for me, but it's going to be um, whichever whichever one of these I click on. So as I click on these, um, I don't know if you can how well you can see this, but this this ID is changing. So if I go down here and click on this one, I get a totally different bridge ID. So each one of these is participating the way that I want, which is great. This is this is exactly what I uh, want this to do. Uh, there's, only, there's one other styling thing I could do while I'm in here, and that is when you're setting up your router link, in addition, um, in addition to setting up just the, the, you know, where it's going to link to or what the, essentially what the href is going to be, another thing that you can do is you can specify You can specify a class name that you want to be set when this link is active. So in our case, if the user, let's say that somebody copies and pastes this URL. Let's say we ship our app and I email you this URL or I tweet it or somehow I share it with another user and they open this URL. What I would like to do is I'd like to make that link active as though you've clicked on it. Um, so I want it to look different. Okay, <clears throat> excuse me. So what we can do is we can say, I want this router link active to be some class name. So let's say selected like that. So let's say I want to have a class called selected. All right, so I'll save this. And that means that in my CSS, I can specify down here, the selected class could have the color of the text could be white. And we could use like sort of a just a slightly different um, background color. 
Uh, let me see here. 3B, 60, 76. Like a blue, but it's just a slightly different blue than we were using before in order for this to work. So if I click on one of these, can you see how it's it's sort of lit up there? Now, what I don't love about this is it's putting, so selected has been put on this here. You can see, see how it says class equals selected? So the selected class has been added to this element, which is not quite what I want. What I would actually like is I would love to put this class not here, but I'd love to put it on the parent. So up here on the list item, I'd like to say that this is the this is the active element. And Re Angular lets you do this. You can move it up to a parent. Instead of putting it on the element, you can put it on the element's parent. So if I do that, it should expand this out. And that look, yeah, that's better. So you can see how this now fills the entire um, list item as opposed to just doing it on the anchor. Is there anything else I can clean up here? Let's see, uh, previously we were doing this, we had to set the cursor to a pointer, but now because these are links, we don't have to do that, so we can get rid of that. Um, I think the rest of it's probably pretty good. So let's save this. And I've got something unsaved over here, so let me save this. Okay, so, so far this is working, but we're not doing anything with the data. So we've got links. When you click on a link, it is sending us into our routes. Our routes are defined in app.routing. So when I'm clicking on these, because I've defined my route bridges ID, if I go back to bridges here, it'll load and just load the top level. Nothing is selected. If I click on one of these, this bridge is selected like so. So that's all working nicely. Okay, the next thing we should do here is we should add some code so that um, our bridge info component can get access to the data that we're working with right now. Because right now, the bridge info component, when it loads, it's expecting to be passed a bridge as a property via an input. You can see we have the input decorator here, and it's getting a bridge in order to say, okay, this is the bridge that you're, you're working with. So that's, that's not what I want to do. I don't want to receive this from, because you'll notice my menu component, uh, sorry, my main component, my app component, We're gonna put the we're gonna put the bridge info component here, but we're not gonna pass any any input prop on it. So let's fix that. So our bridge info component, I'm gonna get rid of this input because we're not gonna be using that, and I'm gonna get rid of input from here as well, so that we can start to do this. So what I want to do instead is I want to I want to make use of the router inside of this component. I want to be able to ask for details from the router about the um, current route that I'm on, because essentially I need to be able to query the route, the router to get this ID, right? Like I need to know which bridge has been, has been, cho has been chosen. Okay, so in order to do this, what I have to do is I have to import some more components. So I'm gonna import, um, I'm going to import activated route and uh, params from at Angular, no, from the router. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to, my constructor's not here right now, I'm going to add back the constructor. And in my constructor, I'm going to inject 
a service, I'm going to inject the activated route into my component. So this is an example of the dependency injection. Let me just do this here. So I'm going to say I have a private member called route and route is the activated route like so. So I'm going to import it and inject it into our component. We have access to it. And Angular is going to take care of making sure that this gets created and is available to our bridge info component when our bridge info component needs to use it. So that's in the constructor. Now, when in the life cycle of our component, when this component is first initialized, what I want to be able to do is I want to be able to read the ID from, I want to be able to read the ID from the route. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to write some code here. So in the beginning, let's just keep it simple. Um, let's say console.log, and I'll say this is the uh, bridge info component. And I'm going to, let's, uh, let's print out the ID. So in order for me to print out the ID here, what I have to do is I have to grab this route so I'm going to say this dot route, and then I'm going to ask for initially, this isn't how we're going to do it long term, but I'm going to ask for snapshot dot params dot ID, like so. And I'll save this and let's try it. Okay, you can see it working right here. Here's the first one. So bridge info component and the bridge is 41S144-C. Here I have bridge 41S144-C. Fantastic. So if I click on another one, you can see that this is changing, but the problem is it's not changing down here. It's never being called again. So that's a problem because what we need to be able to do is we need to be able to watch for changes in this parameter list in the route. And if the user makes any kind of a change, we need our component to receive a notification of that change in order to be able to do something about it. The reason that our code is doing what it's doing is because we're saying, give me a snapshot, like essentially give me the, the way that the, the route looks right now, take a snapshot of it and let me get access to the data. Let me get access in this case to the parameters or you might want the query string data or something like that. So we need a different solution. So Angular makes heavy use of uh, this library RxJS, yeah, and I'm not going to go into tons of detail with it today, um, but I want to start introducing you to some of the ideas. And I would say to you that um, as you get further and further on in working with Angular, you're going to run into this over and over again because Angular uses observables and subscriptions and operators and so on all over the place. So the basic idea here is um, we need to be able to observe future values that are going to be generated or going to be returned to us. So instead of just having a situation where I want to call a function and I want to get back some data, I want to be able to set up a subscription or I want to be able to observe and get real time information back, get values back as they come. So an observable is this collection of future events or future values that you can observe. An observer is a function that operates on or consumes those values as they come back. And um, RxJS has tons and tons of operators. And these are, these are basically functions that let you compose uh, these observables in ways similar to what we've been doing with 
like an array where you map an array or you filter an array. Well, you can do that with, obs with observables too, and you can change an observable that returns one kind of thing into another kind of thing. And so we'll, you, know, you can do that for turning certain kinds of data into network requests and, and so on. So let's keep this simple. Right now, what I'd like to do is I would like to modify our code so that instead of just having access to a snapshot here, what I'm gonna do is here, I'll just comment this so you can see what we did. Instead of doing this, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say this dot route dot params. And params, you'll notice if you hover over it, is an observable. So an observe, you can do all of the things you can do with an observable you can do with the list of parameters. So what I'm gonna do in the simplest case is I'm just gonna to subscribe to it. And I'm gonna pass it a function so that I can observe when things come through, I wanna be able to do something with them. So I'm gonna say that this function, params, it takes one argument, params, of type params. And when that happens, I want to console.log bridge info, and then I want to say params.id. Like so. So if I save, rebuild this, save this, first time it comes up, I get this. But you notice that as I'm clicking through, I'm getting updated values. So I know which one the user has selected, okay? So the only um, improvement I could probably make to this is um, I could I could import um, subscription from RxJS and I could say that I have a um, subscription of type uh, subscription. So here, when I do my subscription, when I subscribe, I can hold on to this subscription in a member variable. So this dot param subscription is equal to this. And then right here I'm saying when the component is initialized, this is what I want you to do. I can do the same sort of thing down here and I could say when this is destroyed, run this function here. And so I'm gonna say if um, this dot param subscription has been set. So if we have a subscription, then let's um, unsubscribe. So we'll just clean up before we go. And it's not, Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Only implemented on G. Oh, so sorry. I need to, I just need to say that my class implements on destroy so that I have, yeah, that's better. So the app starts up. I click on each one of these and I get my bridge and my routes are working. If I go back to the main, if I go to the empty one, whoops. If I go to the empty, I get redirected back to bridges. If I click on a particular bridge, it sticks the ID into, into the route and I'm getting programmatic access to it. So I'm no longer doing input and output into this component. I'm This is a, a, a routed component now which is being placed into my router outlet and run that way. Okay, so the next piece of the puzzle that we're gonna do in the follow-up video to this is we need it so that when you click on any one of these, 
I wanna load the data from our REST API and I wanna show it here. And I also wanna refactor this menu so that on startup, instead of having all of that data bundled directly into my bundle, I wanna reduce the size of my bundle and I'll do a network request in order to get this. So that's coming in the next video.